You are listening to New Europe Institute Free Seas Martin Talks podcast. Welcome everyone. My name is Eugenio Romer. I work for the Institute of New Europe. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Maciej Kubicki from the Chancellery of the President of Poland, who is the head of the Secretariat responsible for the Free Seas Initiative. And we are going to talk about this initiative today. Welcome, sir. Hello, very well welcome to all our viewers. Thank you very much for the invitation to this interview. And I'm very glad that we can discuss the Free Seas Initiative today. And at the beginning, I would like to ask you about uh, how this initiative is effective as a platform of cooperation between 13 countries, member states. What do you think? Well, actually, we must remember that um, this uh, initiative uh, was launched uh, only eight years ago. So this is this is not a, a very mature uh, initiative. Um, and we had, like, uh, I would say, two phases in the development of this uh, initiative. So the first phase was the phase, uh, a very initial stage uh, in which uh, uh, the very the very theoretical concept of, of, of this initiative was uh, developed. And the second stage in which uh, we, we made an attempt to, to develop certain institutions within this initiative. Although we must remember that the initiative itself is not an institution. So it's just a, a format of, of uh, cooperation of, of the 13 um, uh, EU member states. So um, if we talk about these uh, 13 EU member state, uh, states, we, we, we must remember that, uh, you know, it's... it's um, Pretty critical number of of um, of states, and it's not it's not very easy to navigate uh, among so many stakeholders. So, um, uh, regarding uh, these these two facts, I would say that uh, uh, well, it, it's pretty mature, it's pretty effective, um, and uh, I, I I trust that in, in your next next questions, I will be able to to uh, develop these uh, these uh, themes and tell you exactly in which points uh, this initiative proved to be effective. So we can proceed to it now. So in your opinion, what, what uh, actions uh, were effective uh, within those eight years, as you mentioned? Sure. So I, I think like the, the, the first uh, milestone was developing the Three Cs um, Initiative in Investment Fund. Um, uh, this was a very, very important uh, step because uh, it created uh, the first very serious, uh, very serious uh, tool or, or financial mechanism through which certain certain three C's projects um, could have been financed, and um, here I must say that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, fund was never meant to be used as a tool to finance these huge infrastructural um, uh, projects on which the whole initiative as as geoeconomic concept is is based. It was meant to, uh, let's say, uh, complement or, or or support. Um, three C's development uh, in a little bit different way, so not focusing on on these huge, enormous, uh, enormous projects. Uh, rather, rather uh, showing the opportunities that uh, this region uh, has in various uh, areas. So, if you look at the projects that were financed uh, you know, through this mechanism, you will see that um, the scope of these projects of uh, um, is is, um, is is pretty wide. So you you will see that we have a a company that operates um, on the railway market. You will see that we have a company that oper operates uh, in renewables. You will see that there was a uh, an investment in a port in Bulgaria, and you will also see that there was an investment um, in an, uh, a digital pro project. Um, so, so as as we can see, that the scope is is pretty wide. So, uh, um, having said that, uh, I, I need to say now that um, this uh, this fund, I mean, the the fundraising period is over. So we are, let's say, the uh, this project is closed. I mean, what I mean here is is the fund itself. Um, we have a few a few pro projects still in the pipeline. I guess there won't be more than uh, than two, maybe maybe one, you know, still to be still to be financed. But uh, we have certain lessons learned, and I, I think this is this is a huge asset and and uh, and uh, big success of uh, of the three C's initiative. Another success and uh, another milestone. I think you know that um, the the war in Ukraine and what happened next 
really proved uh, the, uh, the correctness of the fundamental assumptions of this uh, initiative. Uh, um, you remember when, when uh, Russia um, attacked Ukraine and uh, then provoked this uh, energy crisis in our part of Europe, we were we very easily uh, could fight the negative uh, negative uh, aspects of, of this uh, or effects of uh, this uh, crisis. And it was all thanks to uh, three C's initiative uh, fundamental projects in energy sector. So had it not been for Baltic pipe, for LNG terminals, for uh, uh, gas connectors in, in our part of, uh, of Europe, I am sure that the situation would be completely different. And uh, we as a region will have had enormous problems in, in uh, fighting these, um, uh, these uh, uh, negative actions of, uh, of Russia. I think this is the way how we perceive it uh, in Poland, the Free Seas Initiative. But how about other countries? Because some countries are rather uh, reluctant to engage themselves more actively uh, in this initiative. So do you think that uh, this is actually an effective platform uh, for more countries in Poland and other countries that feel more endangered by Russia? Well, it's it's pretty difficult to assess. Yes, you are right in a, in a, you know in in this assessment that um, some countries are are uh, less involved. But uh, please remember that um, sometimes this initiative becomes a victim of of internal politics, and uh, uh, we we could observe it in um, in Croatia. So uh, as you as you can remember, the Croatian president at that time. Uh, Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic, who was the co-founder along with the uh, with the Polish president Andrzej Duda, um, she was very enthusiastic about uh, about this uh, this initiative. Later on, when the new president came, you know the the attitude changed um, totally. So um, we we see you know some countries in uh, in which uh, internal politics really affect uh, the attitude towards uh, towards uh, this uh, regional form. Luckily, in, in in Croatia, it was the government that uh, uh, took this enthusiastic approach towards the um, the initiative. Well, we have you know some other countries like Austria, for example, who has enormous potential but uh, does not really want to engage deeply in this in this um, initiative. And and it's pretty difficult for me to figure out why uh, it is like uh, like this. Uh, What's interesting is that uh, in some countries, and Austria here is, is a good example, we can see that uh, you know this uh, lack of enthusiasm, very little enthusiasm uh, 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 expressed by uh, the administration uh, is not really the position of, um, of the business, business circles uh, in these countries. So uh, we can see that um, uh, Austrian uh, entrepreneurs uh, are very interested in in the three C's uh, initiative, and uh, we have signals from them that they will re they would really like their government uh, to 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 uh, get a little bit deeper in this in this uh, collaboration. We have countries like Slovakia, for example, where this uh, this engagement is is really difficult uh, to be noticed and. Uh, um we, we we tried many times to to debate with uh, Slovaks. Um, there was not uh, really much 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 success uh, about it. And you you can see it's it's reflected both on the political level and uh, also uh, on the project level. So if you see that uh, you know uh, how Via Carpatia, which is like a flag uh, flagship project uh, for um, for the uh, initiative, it's very much advanced in um, in Poland. It's uh, very much advanced in in, uh, in Hungary. In Slovakia, there is a huge gap, and it's it's difficult for us to figure out why Slovaks do not work on on these projects. Uh, a good example is is Czechia, for example, when um, the new government really changed its its attitude towards uh, towards PCC initiative, uh, and now we observe like renewal of uh, of the interest. Uh, of the government in uh, in Prague, uh, Czechs uh, recently submitted uh, two proposals for the uh, list of uh, three C's um, uh, priority projects. So uh, we are very very hopeful about uh, about it. 
You mentioned the, the internal politics uh, in particular countries. So how about Poland? Because we, we recently have had a uh, shift in the government. We have a new government in Poland. Do you think the new government will be also very eager uh, to, to co cooperate to promote this initiative? Yes, as you as you know, uh, this is a coalition uh, coalition government, and uh, uh, President Duda, when when uh, he spoke immediately after after the election, when he spoke, he was meeting the leaders of uh, of the parties, and and uh, he spoke to them. Um, he also asked questions about their attitude towards uh, the Three Cs uh, initiative. So uh, I won't mention the names of the parties, but there were some parties that. Uh, uh, opted for um, maintaining this uh, this uh, uh, deep engagement of, of, of Poland in these uh, initiatives. Uh, there were some parties which did not really uh, relate to to, uh, to this issue. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, neither of the parties said that they are against uh, against this uh, this project. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm um, I am um, you know a member of of uh, administration, uh, but. I must say that you know, after so many years of developing this this project, and, and uh, after so many years of developing the whole ecosystem that uh, that uh, you know arouse around this uh, this project, uh, in my opinion, it would be very unwise for any politician to kill this project because um, you can really build you know a a, a big political success uh, based on on the three C's uh, initiative. Uh, you can see that this project is is very much appreciated um, uh, outside our region. We have deep interest of Japan. We have deep interest of uh, of the USA. Um, uh, and I must remind that the United States of America is uh, um, uh, our priority uh, priority partner, strategic partner in the uh, in the initiative. Uh, we have interest from the European Commission. Um, so uh, I believe there's there's a big potential for developing this uh, project. And if you look if you look at at uh, the outcomes of the most recent uh, 3SI summit in, in Bucharest, and uh, if you remember that um, during this summit we enlarged the three C's family uh, by Greece, uh, you will see that this this project is still uh, flourishing and and. Uh, uh, there's a big potential that uh, other countries uh, see in this uh, this uh, particular project. So maybe we should expand it somehow. Uh, you mentioned before that uh, the Three Cs uh, initiative is not an institution. It established some institutions, but it's not institutions institution itself. Uh, so how about establishing, for example, a secretariat for uh, Free SI? Because these ideas were uh, already discussed. Yes, this is this is something that uh, Poland uh, really would like to to have. So we proposed uh, we proposed establishment of this technical uh, secretariat, because um, uh, in our opinion this uh, could uh, let's say provide some order um, uh, into the, the the workflow of of the three C's uh, initiative. Um, uh, Unfortunately, uh, some of our pa partners uh, within the, the Three Cs initiative oppose this uh, this project. The arguments they raise, uh, well, in my opinion, they do not really have, uh, you know, any 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 substantial rationale behind. It's uh, uh, there were voices that, uh, for example, uh, we need to maintain the flexibility of um, of this format. Uh, and uh, you know, setting up a secretariat would uh, somehow um, uh, kill it. This is not true. This is not true. Uh, actually, uh, the secretariat is only um, you know a, a it's, it's not an institution. It's it's just a tool. It's just a tool that uh, intends to to uh, to be um, like let, let's say an assisting body to the to the work of uh, of the secretariat especially that uh, as we observe you know this um, uh, institutional strength uh, among and institutional interest uh, within the uh, the three cs initiative um, differs you know from country to country so for example in poland um, uh, we are in a pretty good position because we have a a strong body in um, in uh, the presidential administration, which is represented by by me and uh, and my team, 
uh, we have uh, you know a special team um, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, and uh, they also um, work as a supportive body to to the work of the, the government coordinator uh, for the Three Cs Initiative uh, from Poland. Plus, we have uh, let's say the third tip of of this triangle, which is Big BGK, the Polish Development Bank, which provides some uh, financial uh, tools and and this is uh, you know in my opinion and and um, uh, ideal scheme of, of working but this is not the case in other countries so uh, um, in other countries as i observe you know there's some uh, people who uh, work at the ministry of foreign affairs uh, and you know the, the three c's initiative uh, portfolio is only an addition to the whole bunch of work they uh, they do this obviously obviously means that uh, you know these people do not have or these uh, these countries do not have this institutional capability uh, to 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 deal with the project uh, properly or at least at the level so, of engagement. So let me stop you here uh, maybe some countries are afraid of polish domination because we heard uh, such voices as well uh, well, it's it's difficult, you know, for me to 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 relate this uh, this fear if if there is any because um, I, I I'm not that sure with the setting up of the of the secretariat. Uh, you know, we we propose setting up of a secretariat in uh, um, not 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 in Warsaw. I mean, uh, we didn't discuss the the details. So this secretariat could be set up in some some other some other uh, capital. Uh, the Hungarians were very happy to, to host the secretariat in, uh, in Budapest. This is, I, I don't think this is an, an issue of, of Polish uh, domination. You know, um, the work of, of, this, uh, of this initiative uh, is based on consensus. So uh, we cannot really move forward uh, unless we, we reach um, a common ground, ground uh, among all uh, uh, participating states. So do, what do you think, uh, what will be the future of this initiative, especially uh, if it comes to countries uh, who are not already the members like uh, like Belarus or Ukraine? Do you think it is uh, somehow in the distant future maybe possible that they will join the, the initiative? Well, you know, the, the basic rule for the club is that uh, the participating states uh, in the Three Cs initiative can only be states that uh, are part of the European Union. So uh, uh, obviously, we, you know, looking at the demand, let's say that that uh, evolved over the years among the, the uh, around the initiative, uh, we had positive signs from from um, uh, signals, positive signals from from Ukraine. We had positive signals from Moldova, and. Uh, we granted uh, to these countries uh, the status of uh, associated participating uh, state. And, uh, and this is the status that they already have. Uh, obviously, they are not a member of the European Union, but they have certain path or scheme of, of uh, collaboration with the Three Cs uh, initiative. We also have- and How about uh, Belarus? Because uh, I know this is uh, very difficult, I think, but maybe uh, using our soft power as polls, uh, we maybe we set a good example for for um, the opposition in uh, Belarus because we were also uh, under Soviet domination, right? And now we are a free country. We are in the European Union, and uh, we are in the Western structures, basically. Yes, bringing bringing Belarus closer to uh, to the Three Cs initiative has never been on the table. It has never been discussed. It has never been a, a political issue. It simply did not. Uh, has not existed uh, so far. Obviously, if we, if we look in, in strategic terms, in, in a long-term uh, perspective, we know that uh, this that Belarus is, is uh, an inherent part of, uh, of the region. And uh, we, we, we cannot speak about the uh, you know, uh, uh, cohesive uh, development of, uh, of the region without uh, Belarus. But uh, I think that in the, in the current uh, political circumstances, this regime in, in Minsk, uh, it would be extremely difficult uh, to, 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 to offer anything substantial to, to the Belarusians. Uh, let's discuss also the, the energy sector because it's very important uh, um, in terms of, of the war in Ukraine and winter. 
and uh, all our, our, our problems that are caused by the, those situations. So um, do you think that this uh, particular part of cooperation will expand? And what can Poland be, uh, do in order to, to strengthen those connections? Yes, actually, the energy sector is, uh, in my opinion, the most important sector of, of, uh, of uh, cooperation within the Three Cs initiative. As we all know, uh, this collaboration in, uh, within the initiative is, is based on three pillars. Um, it's energy infrastructure, it's uh, transportation infrastructure, and digital infrastructure. If you look at, uh, at the composition of, uh, of um, uh, or distribution of uh, um, uh, those uh, priority projects, so you will see that um, uh, uh, energy projects compose a very substantial part of, uh, of uh, all, these, uh, all these projects. And uh, I would now relate to what, what I said uh, before in the, one of the previous questions that you, that you asked. Um, uh, th this particular collaboration showed uh, that we could we can really succeed with delivering the project. So uh, uh, all those projects that I mentioned, uh, the Baltic Pipe, uh, the LNG terminal in, uh, in Świnoujście, the LNG terminal in Klaipeda, uh, the projected uh, uh, FSRU uh, in, the, in the Bay of Gdańsk, uh, the LNG terminal in, in Kirk Island, um, you know, all these interconnectors, all these uh, gas pipelines, uh, they all proved to be very effective. They all proved to, to, uh, to be building the region's uh, resilience. Uh, what I want to say also, because this is, this is also uh, worth mentioning since, since it's, it's a very new development, um, I read that uh, only two or three days uh, ago, uh, there was an official launch of, of a gas pipeline from Bulgaria to Serbia. Uh, obviously, Serbia is, is, is not a part of, um, of the Three Seas uh, initiative, uh, but uh, the Western Balkan uh, countries also are also uh, aspiring you know, to, 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 to get closer to the Three Seas uh, initiative. And uh, obviously, uh, we have the potential to, to, to project this, this cooperation to our closest uh, neighborhood. And it, it's it's perfect example of uh, how the three Cs um, states um, can collaborate with, with its uh, closest, uh, closest um, uh, neighborhood. But you mentioned uh, Bulgaria. I would also add Hungary and ask about the, their um, willingness to be independent from Russian resources like natural gas and oil. Um, especially Hungary was uh, rather re reluctant to, to the sanctions. Uh, so what do you think? Will those countries, do they, these countries really want to cooperate within the initiative? Well, Hungary, I, I would say that uh, they are pretty, um, a pretty active member of, uh, of uh, this uh, format. Um, uh, as I said before, they are very, very advanced in, in, uh, in uh, developing the uh, Via Carpathia project. Uh, regarding the um, uh, energy project projects, they also submitted uh, a few a few um, priority projects in the energy sector. It, it's pretty difficult for me to comment on on their attitudes towards uh, towards the war in Ukraine and, and uh, especially you know to comment on on uh, the energy policies because uh, this is the internal issue and, and uh, this is also about the the security. But um, uh, I am sure that. Uh, through the participation in the three C uh, format, that they are really able to to raise uh, their resilience uh, and uh, their independence from uh, from um, uh, Russian uh, uh, sources of, of energy. Okay, we are stopping here. Thank you very much, Mr. Maciej Kubicki from the Chancellor of the President of Poland. Frank, thank you for this interesting interview. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And many thanks to our viewers. Goodbye. Thank you.